Oh, happy Sunday to y'all in this holiday weekend. Hey, hey, move, move. Um, posted a picture, and I was reminded of it with a conversation I was having. And um, posted a picture on my uh, on my community page or community section. Uh, I live in rural Southeast Georgia. Why is it that I'm at Staple? I'm going to Staples to buy a freaking seat cushion. That I see a photo or an image, or sorry, an advertisement about getting your passport, and I was like, God dang! Line of MGTOW um, actually dropped a comment under it, and he's like, Man, the light can't be any greener. Or can't get any greener. So shout out to that brother, and um, another brother. Uh, forgot his name. I apologize. He, he mentioned, like, hey, listen, man, like, look, listen, uh, either get your password if you don't have it already. And, I, you know, I, I mentioned, I was like, uh, listen, I'm on a different mindset right now. I'm not really into traveling. That's just not my thing. I traveled a lot as a kid, so that kind of um, kind of turns me off from traveling a little bit because I have been stuck at an airport, st- not, you know, I my aunt forgot me one time or she woke up late. That's what it was. She woke up late and didn't get me to the airport. So I thought I'd never make it home and have to stay in Jersey, New Jersey for the rest of my life um, with my grandma. But, you know, you're a little kid, man. I'm talking like middle school age here. So I you know, I got another flight and I got through it anyways. But um, I replied to the brother um, and you'll see my reply. But I said my mindset is stack or starve. And shout out to the brother in our space, stack or starve. Um, I know he's usually on Edge channel, and I'm sure he's in other places on the YouTube as, on YouTube as well, or Black Manosphere as well. But it's Stack or Starve out here. Um, talking with, uh, having a, a long conversation with another brother, um, and we were just going back and forth about like the Purple Pill Wars and my ideas, going a little bit deeper into it. I would say five years at the, be- I was saying five years, but now everything is cut in half. Everything is two years. And then, you know, he came back and said, um, you know, like, listen, man, that's how that's how long it's going to take to start. We don't even know how long it's going to be for, you know, and like, that's the other thing. We don't know how long this dark age, so to speak, is going to be for. So that's what we're looking at now is um, a dark ages of sorts that's coming. So my whole thing is stack or star. Right. And this is a great. This is awesome because it puts a name to it. And you know, I'm all about definitions, terms, and things like that. Terms, phrases, and other things that help us define and crystallize a lot of the things that, we, um, that we're going through, right? Or that we will be going through. And it helps us because now it gives us a name to the demon, so to speak, and brings it into an existence that we can actually, like a tangible form, so to speak. So it's stack or star for me. At this point, I'm trying to get as many assets. Um, as you can see, this house, like, you know... My bed was right there earlier, so I moved that into what used to be my mom's room. Uh, I broke apart her bed and took out the king mattress. I'll probably get rid of that mattress. Um, And my next thing is to, of course, remodel this house. So I did all that in effort to move things around. Like I'm going to move my piano. uh, Like my piano will be right here where the bed was. And then this will be a whole listening room over time. Um... And I'll be doing some other stuff or a music room. I don't know. It's just a freaking way to decorate it, to be honest, Um, because the flow of this house is weird. And I've been looking at those house plans for a reason. All that, you can't do that without money. You can't do that without assets. You can't do that without stacking some type of cheese and putting something together and putting a plan in motion in terms of buying businesses or investing um, in uh, you know cryptocurrencies. Like actually, M1 Finance opened up their cryptocurrency investing, so I'm gonna actually put money into that. Um, you know, I, so I'm doing all these little things so that I can actually put myself in a better position um, because I don't want to be in the. Hey, what are you doing, Kanoa? Bring that ass. Um, I don't want to be in a bad position. I don't want to be, you know, having to, you know, um, what's it called? Uh, be at a disadvantage in all of this, especially when you see it coming. Talking with brothers like Lionel, man, he, like he, he puts out the warning a long time ago and say, hey, or a couple of weeks ago, actually, to me. And he's talked about this in the past as well, along with brother I'm Classic. You know, I'm Classic said pay off your debts. It's probably um, something that he learned boots on the ground uh, research and in- intel 
is pay off your debts so that you can actually um, pay off your debt pay or paying off your debts is the best way to make and maintain your money, right? To keep your money, keep the value of your money. It's the best thing you could do right now is pay off your debts and get rid of that because we're seeing the interest rates hikes and so on and so forth. So whether you actually pay attention to it or not, you'll start to see where your um, the interest rate on your credit card is whatever plus prime is, um, you know, whatever the interest rate is plus prime or something like that. So whatever the interest rate is for the market is, depending on, you know, what type of agreement that you sign for your credit card. Right. So it's things like that, getting rid of your debt, um, making sure that you're putting uh, money into assets that are appreciating and then you're putting money into um, your 401ks and other things. So you can get those matches, which I do have to get back on, you know, so it's like it's my mindset is just really stacker starve. I can't buy a barn dominium that's like or I can't, you know, afford to build a barn dominium that's forty nine hundred square feet total, you know, um, you know, with a large garage that you could fit tractors, buggies, vehicles, workshop, all that stuff. Um, I can't do that without the proper money or the proper um, what's it called funds to do that. I can't read. I can't redecorate this house in a little bit. Um, later on tonight, I'm going to be working uh, this Sunday and tomorrow um, like it's a regular day just so I can catch up on work and be ahead of things and make sure that I maintain, you know, um, good standing and uh, a good look when it comes to the company I work for. Even last night, um, uh, another guy's on call. He puts a message in the chat. I said, boom, I got right on. I was right next to my computer. I said, looking at it now. And he was like, man, I really appreciate the fact that you answered on non-service hours and I didn't have to feel like I was alone to solve a problem. And I was like, yo, that, that's not a problem, you know, so on and so forth. The issue was for like, the issue was there for 12 hours. So he should have seen it a long ass time ago. And even the secondary person on call should have seen it and said something as well. Um, or at least put in the chat that they acknowledge the alert and it's not a problem. Right. But I was able to fix it because it was it was it really was a non issue. It was just a monitoring platform, not recognizing something because I have like three different tests to validate the service. And one of the tests was, you know, the port being open. But I have other tests that go even deeper than saying the port being open. It's like, does the port actually respond to make sure that I eat that it can accept emails and stuff like that? So doing those things. So now guess who sees that? My project manager, my other coworkers, you know, they know that, hey, listen, I'm going to be there if you need me to. I'll answer in the middle of the night, all that shit. So we have to do things like that, along with finding other ways to actually make money, maintain money um, and even grow. And of course, like uh, grow our money in terms of our assets and investing in things that actually make us um, um, invest in things that will grow over time. And make sure that we have money in the long run, you know. So it's really my mindset is stack or starve. I'm not trying to travel. That's not my thing. For those that do it, go ahead and do it because when you travel, you can actually see other opportunities out there that I won't see. So yo, do it. Like it's it's do it. Go ahead and do that shit. But my biggest thing is if I can actually stack up some cheese, put myself in a better position, then I can actually you know do more later on. Um, but it's crazy. And I'm really starting to think a lot of people just to shift this conversation. I'm starting to think a lot of fucking people are retarded. I'm really starting to think a lot of motherfuckers are retarded, especially when you see some of the, um, things that we hear in this space, not only women, but from men that to me, it, it doesn't make any sense because how could you fucking think this shit when everything around you is telling you you're wrong. This is a problem, not just relationships, but with the way you think about in terms of this economy and what's actually happening right now. Boots on the fucking ground. You see it every day. You see gas and all the gas prices rising, so on and so forth. And you think somehow in some way in your fucking pea brain mind that you could just hope past this shit. Y'all gotta be fucking kidding me. I went to a furniture store yesterday. Uh, the furniture store where, like, you know, I, I'm, like, that's, like, my store now. Like, I'm kind of liking that spot. Um, and I was just looking at stuff, trying to get ideas. I've been wanting to go down there for a day or two, or since last week. And trying to get ideas about remodeling and, and like, interior decorating and what I can actually do. And when I say these people 
are damn near bored in that store. There's nothing going on. They're not getting an influx of like clients and other people or anything like that. I already live in a small town, so this is pretty high end furniture. So, you know, they have probably pretty huge markups on shit, no doubt. Hey, stop. This dog keeps on eating my flooring. This is why I get to get the floor done. Because this dog's eating this stuff. She's gonna poop it out, but it's just, I don't want her to eat it. So I have to, I have to anyways, I got two. But, you know, these people, they're not getting much in terms of sales. Or if they're getting sales, it's probably repeat customers. You know, we're not seeing, um, they're not seeing where it's a large amount of, uh, a large influx of people coming in and out and all this other stuff. Uh, looking at pieces, moving into the area. Maybe people moving into the area, but it's not consistent sales. And this is the shit that, like, when we see it, boots on the ground, right? And we're trying to tell people this shit. And they really want to question us in terms of the stuff that we're saying just because it's like we don't like you as a messenger or that sounds like bullshit. That's not what I'm seeing because I go out every night. There's plenty of rich niggas in there, blah, blah, blah. Man, you know how many times I went to the club broke as fuck just enough to pay for whatever and stayed in there? Fuck that. You know how many times I went to the club with money and noticed nobody else was throwing shit? To the point where the bitches loved you so damn much because you was giving out money and they didn't want to leave you the fuck alone. They want to sit where the money's at. You know how many times, especially when I lived in Florida, this was years ago. Years ago now. But, you know, I'd go in the club, just bummy as hell, fucking have holes in my shirt, did not fucking care. Holes under the armpit of my shirt. I did not give a fuck. Still dress bummy to this day. And I swear to you, when I go in these clubs and I see some of these dudes, like, they just like, yo, it's um uh, the one club I go to up here in Georgia. They're like, they have a sign on, or they have them some like just letters on the work on the wall that says tip or dip. The bouncers will really get you up out of there if you ain't got no money. In fact, the bouncer says, hey, listen, man, I need to see your ones. Even if I show him a whole bunch of 20s, he's like, no, you got to go and get ones. I guess that's just the policy of the club or whatever. But even if you pay to get in, the, the bouncer will still set, tell you, or the uh, security, I should say. He's not a bouncer because bouncers are usually outside. But security, after you've already paid to get in, security will tell you, nah, I need to see money before you get in here. So you done paid $20 at the gate. You get to inside the club, the inner sanctum. And before you even get into the fucking part where the dancers are at, you getting checked again? Bro, I swear to God, that shit was so funny. I don't know. I won't say he did it to me, but I've seen this before. So I hope, that's how I know it's a little bit of a policy. Um, But, bro, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, this shit, to me, is just it's just a sign of low-key retard. Like a, 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 a sign of retardation in some of these people watch out get away from my cup stop it it's a it's a sign of retardation if you ask me you can't be this fucking stupid you just cannot be you can't be this ignorant of what's going on and i know their answer is that they are they can be they are they actually are they're showing it every day you cannot unsee it blah 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 so it is what it is but man I just can't believe the way the del they fight for the delusion so badly. They don't want to believe that this shit is crumbling. This shit is, and when I say crumbling, I'm not saying like, you know, U.S. is going to go into all out civil war. Like these motherfuckers aren't ready for that internally. And the people that are ready for it will be wiped out by the U.S. army, if anything, right? You know, like. It'll take some time. They'll make some. Uh, they'll make some moves, but it'll be like those guys that want to be held up at some cattle ranch or something like that, and uh, you know the government has to step in or some shit like that. I don't know. I forgot what that was, but um, it'll be like that. And it'll get squashed because all you gotta do is starve them out. But <laughs> the people that already won't last, and it won't go to zero. But people will be suffering. 
People will be shacking up with one another. I talk about room tricking. It's going to be a lot of dudes that are going to be in the same position where they can't fucking go anywhere. They got to get a room with some, you know, some chick they don't like or some person they don't they don't like or a family member they don't like. The chicks are going to have to do the same thing. These chicks are going to have to have covens or tribes. Um, they're going to have little mini compounds where they start to buy houses and pay off the houses in a neighborhood. Um, they will get together. They will fucking form a Borg collective of sorts. Um, and, you know, those that can will. And if they can't, they will be homeless. You know, if they can't fucking bring their own selves to a heal, to like it to heal, you know, a lot of there's going to be a whole bunch of soft bros just on top of one another. There's going to be a whole bunch of soft bros that are just going to be sitting in a home with other women, you know, walking around like it's a fucking dormitory. They already have like, you know, how they have those co-working spaces. They already have that stuff for like, you know, pretty much. Frat houses for adults. I've seen that shit. Man, that's... It's a little under 10 years ago I saw that article. Where um, it was more or less like a, a frat house for adults. And the reason why it's it, we could characterize that as other than, like, say, an apartment. Is because you would share, like, common area spaces. Um, you know, TVs and all that other stuff. Like, dormitories, frat houses. Um, and you'll, you would share like a kitchen or a couple kitchens every floor or something like that. Um, another place is, I think it's like, I was trying to work, I was trying to get this job to do these revision 26 documents or something like that for some wiring diagrams. But there's this thing called like X Los Olis, um, X Orlando, where they have like, it's a fully, almost like fully integrated high rise um, community um, where you really, you rarely, if ever have to leave the high rise itself. So you're going to see a lot of people that have the money that are upper middle class, middle uh, high, like, you know, elite, so to speak. I don't know if you say high class, but they're going to live in those, uh, they're going to live in those type of um, uh, communities, right? Those are, those are upper middle class, like uh, millennials and shit. They'll live in those communities where they don't have to go outside. They rarely, if ever, have to drive. Um, uh, if they do drive, they may have a car or they'll use the club, uh, you know, or the communities like traveling and stuff like that. Um, or they'll get Ubers and stuff like that because they can afford it. But what was nice about these uh, communities is that they had every couple floors. They didn't have, of course, pools, common areas, cafes, clubs, all in one big ass building. All right. And and what it played on is that most millennials don't um, most millennials don't want to uh, grow up, so to speak. A lot of delayed or arrested development. Um, and they always want to talk with one another. That that's like kind of like it's a, a perpetual high school or something like that. So the way you would have it is they had these. um they would have these buildings where you could have yoga courses, cafes, as I said, pools. They would have other events and parties. And you would pay for all this stuff. And then, you know, you would just stay within the community. Also, you would have a floor where you would have also co-working space as well. So even if you wanted to, you'd go down to floor five, do your work in your little cubicle. You'd rent that space out or your mini office. And then you would go back upstairs to your house. So everything would be right there for you so you don't have to leave. This is where a lot of people where they're going to have, I, I, well not, this is where I, I, this is where I think quite a few people that can actually afford to do it, not a lot of people, will actually start to live, especially millennials, and then kind of quote unquote wait out this storm so they don't have to deal with all this stuff. There's a movie about this where it was like a dystopian future or something like that. Actually, no, not a dystopian future, but um, people lived in there and then they started killing each other off, which was wild. But um, yeah, look up like X Miami, X Los Olas. Um, I'll probably put it in the description, uh, you know, uh, or maybe in the comment section where it's a little bit more visible. But um, and I'll try and find that article that I was I was looking at, man. That was quoting. Uh, it, man, it was it was something about like you know people are living in cold living spaces, and you're gonna start seeing more women do this, and you're gonna see start seeing this where in more metropolitan areas, you know, um, where you can where they're gonna come in with multiple blended um internet services you know where um 
you could be in this place and you'd have your access, you'd access to like one port, but then you might have like blended or, um, you know, some type of level of redundancy in internet service because you're all going to be working from home and you never want to leave this place. So you never want to lose streaming or tough other types of stuff. So they're going to come in with fiber from multiple providers and then you should never be down ever unless there was some major failure in equipment um, or equipment for like a floor or something like that. But the whole building will never be down. Just looking at it from a computer nerd perspective. Um, but I think that's going to be like, I think that's going to be the next thing, man. And I think that's where a lot of people that can afford to do it will. But a lot of these motherfuckers that want to act retarded as if we quote unquote need each other and we want to um, be a part of, uh, you know, we want to rebuild the back uni- black community. We have to stay and fight, blah, blah, blah. All the other fuck shit that people are saying. All right, cool. No problem. All right. You stay here and um, I'll be on the fifth floor and uh, just just drop it off at the door. OK, you know, my Chinese food or whatever the fuck, you know, like, don't yeah, no, no, no need to come up. No need to come up. In fact, don't even get out of your car. Somebody will come and get it from you. You can just like keep the car running. You just like you just drive off. You know, you don't want to I don't want to waste your time with, um, you know, you, you can get back to your fucking community building and shit like that. And and repair and reparations and or uh, repairing the uh, the community and stuff like that. You know, a lot of people want to uh, talk reparations, but they don't want to fight for reparations, which is the wild shit. Um, there's only a few people that are actually doing that and really talking about it and really trying to get after it. And then there's just people that want to sit back and wait for, you know, um, the uh, the spoils of of the of that that war or that battle, so to speak. Anyways, I'll leave it at that. We're at 21 minutes. I didn't even think it was going to be 10 minutes, whatever. But, you know, I've got some shit to say. Uh, with that being said, I wish you all the best. And uh, yeah, make sure you're <laughs> make sure the one you're the ones in uh, these high rises and uh, not the ones um, <laughs> delivering the fucking food. With that being said, I love you all. I really do wish the best for all of you. And uh, yeah, peace.